Hello gardeners and plant parents. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on this channel. We take that science and we apply it to gardening and plant care. So if you like the sound of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below and let me know in the comments if you like Ella. This is Ella. Say hi. Every time I film in the plant room, I actually move her out. Today she's being a huge suck baby and she does not want to go. Today we're talking about ordering seeds or plants off of Wish, Amazon, and eBay that come from out of country and kind of the responsibility you're taking on the moment those seeds land on your doorstep. We're gonna be going over exactly why you may wanna think twice about purchasing these seeds or plants, but then also what to do if you've already purchased these seeds or plants and you're wondering how you can ethically include these in your plant collection if they worked out for you. If they didn't work out for you, how to dispose of the plant that you have grown that turned out to not be a monster aloe. Now I haven't heard a lot of YouTubers talking about this, but there is one in particular and I will leave a link in the description below if you wanna go check out her channel, but she has a series that's essentially about the dirt on the indoor plant world. And one of the series or one of the videos in the series that she does, she talks about the purchasing of monstera albo seeds from online. And she lightly touches on the danger of this, but she doesn't go into too much detail. And I don't see any other YouTubers or plant people talking about this. So I thought I would bring you the science more so behind the dangers of these plants coming into your country, let alone growing them in your home. What we're gonna be going over is exactly what the history of invasive species are how it originally started and kind of where we're at today with invasive species. Then we're gonna be talking about some of the other risks, even if an invasive, it's not an invasive species, what you can risk happening and kind of the danger you're putting your community, uh, plant community, or just your outside world in by bringing these plants in. And then if you have gotten these seeds, these plants, how you can properly dispose of them once you are done with them or if you decide you don't want them anymore so that it doesn't end up being an issue with the environment. So invasive species history. Let's start off with exactly what the definition for an invasive species is. An invasive species is not a weed. I am sorry guys, that is not considered an invasive species. It is in your garden, but it is not in the environment around the garden. So that doesn't make the cut, but what does make the cut is stuff that wasn't originally here, say in Canada or the United States, until settlers or just people in general brought these plants over or moved them around the world. An invasive species means that the plant not only did it survive in the environment, but it's causing some sort of issue. So whether that be out competing and succeeding at out-competing native vegetation, maybe it's poisonous or detrimental to some sort of insect or animal that is native to the area, or it is very prolific and it literally takes the place over. The best example of this is actually English ivy in the US. This is a massive issue. It was brought over by English settlers because it was a green foliage and it was very pretty. Um, now it's turned into a huge issue that takes over people's yards. Here in Canada, that's not considered an invasive species because our winter tends to kill that English ivy off and you're, for the most part, not going to see English ivy taking over someone's front lawn here in, say, zone three. Some examples other than English ivy that you are probably familiar with and you see all the time driving on roads around either your city or on the highway are things like purple loosestrife, Japanese barberry, the common pansy, I'm gonna really screw this up, but ferro, thergamikis, it's like a brown, I'll insert a photo of it, but it's like a brown kind of ugly thing. This you see all over Saskatchewan, especially in wetlands areas, it is bad it out competes native vegetation and it wins every time and even aquatic species have been brought over that are invasive and 
Again, these were brought over because people thought they looked prettier than the native vegetation and they wanted to spice things up. They were brought over with the best intention of just beautifying a yard, but eventually it completely took over. Eurasian milfoil. Milfoil? Anyways, it's an aquatic species and I know you've seen this because this is literally in every lake in Canada. And I actually didn't know this was an invasive species until I started researching for this topic. And I thought, oh my goodness, yeah, this has taken over and it's ruined lakes because it's just gross to step on. It's literally everywhere. So yeah. Moral of the story is a majority of these plants were not brought over by mistake. They were brought over either in full plant form or in seed form by hobbyists and gardeners from other countries who wanted to spice up their gardens here in Canada or the US. This has resulted in, you know, damaging effects to the ecology and just the native species around it. Um, another really good example is smooth brome and Smooth brome isn't native to Canada, but it was brought over by settlers as a grazing food. So a food that could be used to graze cattle on. And now you literally see it in every single ditch, like every space possible, you will find smooth brome in Canada. And that is not native to Canada whatsoever. However, fescues and things are, but smooth brome will completely choke out fescue. So maybe our invasive species don't come over on ships anymore or as settlers moving in, but they do come in the form of seed packets from wish.com or ebay.ca, whatever the case is. And while it doesn't seem the same, it is identical to the mistakes that our ancestors made. We're just repeating it in a fashion that is on an enormous scale. So say you get a plant or a cutting and it comes from out of country. That, regardless of what country or how far it's traveled from, even if it's come from North America, so United States to Canada or Canada to the United States, this is still against the law. I have no idea how these growers get these plants over top of the borders. There is intense legal scrutiny that they need to go through in order to be able to trade um, live living plants like that. It's to the point, to put this into perspective how serious this is, if you buy a fruit from the grocery store or a vegetable from a grocery store and it has seeds in it. So let's use the, use the example of blueberries. If you have a product of the USA here in Canada and it says it's from the United States, says it's from California, that produce, regardless of if it's organic or not organically grown, has been irradiated with a small amount of radiation and that is to basically nullify those blueberries or that fruit from being able to grow. The reason for this is because of invasive species, whether that be diseases that those plants naturally carry or just not being able to grow it because once it gets to the landfill, say it doesn't start sprouting. And that is the honest to goodness truth. So if you are somehow getting plants over borders, there is, major loopholes being missed um, and it should have been caught it shouldn't have been allowed but if you end up with it what are the risks that you're putting the outside world in if you have this plant well first off it could have diseases whether that be a bug or a fungal disease a bacterial disease whatever the case is if that gets into the outside world, whether that's on an insect that made its way into your home and then made it outdoors, or you touch the leaf of the plant inside and then you go outside to garden, or just someone visiting touches the plant and then goes outside to enjoy nature and ends up touching a plant that that disease can tra be transferred to, you're potentially risking damaging the entire plant population in your community or your vicinity in which that disease can get to. Now you're probably thinking, well, if I just touch one plant here and then I touch a plant out there and then by chance something happens where it takes hold in the environment outside, it's just gonna take hold on that plant and it's not going to spread, which I would love to say is the case. However, there's birds, there's bees, there's insects, there's humans. And then there's just the fact that once winter comes, especially in Canada, you're gonna take off all that dead foliage, 
put it in the compost, put it in the garbage, or bring it to your local compost center, and you're going to spread that disease very quickly. Again, it's happened, it's been done. So don't think you're gonna be the exception that's just gonna get away with it. It takes one person, one plant, one disease, to completely annihilate the environment. Now, say you've got seeds and you're probably thinking, well, a Monstera aloe or a Thai constellation from wish.com or eBay isn't a big deal because not only is it not going to be invasive in a place like Canada, but there's no live foliage, so it's not like it came with any bacterial diseases. Um, there's no insects on it because again, it's just a seed, but in a lot of cases with those $5 wish packages, once you start growing them, they don't end up being monster elbows. They end up being oats or some sort of grass or grain or whatever. It, they very rarely turn out to be monster elbows because A, that's impossible. <laughs> you can't have a variegated plant from a seed. It has to be from tissue culture or a cutting. Fun fact. But not only that, you grow a plant, a mystery plant, that you have no idea what it is, and then it turns out to be nothing. It turns out to be very ugly and you don't like it, so you scrap it. You throw it in the compost pile, you throw it in the garbage. Again, you are literally putting a plant that you have no idea what it's capable of into the environment, potentially to spread disease or to grow invasively in the landfill or the compost is deposited in. So what should you do? Whether you have the plant and it turned out to be nothing or you got the seeds and they showed up on your front doorstep, do not throw these out. And I'm like dead serious, do not throw them out. If you throw out a packet of seeds, they are going to germinate, especially if you throw them out when it's nice outside, like right now. They're gonna germinate in the landfill. That is 100% given. Seeds, in some cases, can survive hundreds of years and be viable if they are in the right conditions in the soil. So, do not throw them out. If you have plants, do not throw them out. Do not compost them. Like, literally, I'm serious. Do not put these into the environment. What you need to do if you want to be responsible with your wish or your eBay seeds is you need to burn them. And I know that sounds insane and like I'm a crazy person, but burning those seeds is literally the only viable option to make sure that they are dead and they're not going to cause issues. So put them in the fire pit, put them under high heat, whatever it takes, just make sure that they're burnt. Another option is you can put them in a blender and try to blend them up, like chop them up into little bits and pieces. But again, you gotta make sure every single seed is chopped up. You can't have one or two that aren't. It has to be every single seed. Another option is you could try to put them in like a chemical solution. So bleach, for example, would, you know, downgrade the viability of it. But again, you're risking the potential of like one of those seeds not absorbing the bleach or whatever and eventually germinating so burn the seeds burn the plants and i know that sounds crazy i know i'm a small youtuber and i know this video is probably going to go nowhere and it's probably not going to alert the world to the dangers of bringing in seeds from out of country whether it's just our next door neighbors in the united states but i just want to put it out there that i don't i don't agree with it i don't think it's a good idea and if my 2000 subscribers decide that, yeah, you know what, this isn't a good idea. This is incredibly irresponsible thing to do. And you guys decide not to do it either. Then I just saved potentially 2000 other plants from growing in Canada and the US and the UK and the Philippines and India. That's like my top countries that watch this channel. Thanks guys. But yeah. If you guys like this video, be sure to share it, spread the message, let people know like this isn't good. <laughs> Don't be doing this. This is a bad idea. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below if you've ever bought seeds from Wish or eBay or from out of country um, and you didn't know that this is even illegal or not possible. 
I'd be interested to know what if you guys have tried. I know when I first started getting into like more of the exotic plants, for example, carnivor, carnivorous plants. Um, when I started to get more into the carnivorous plants, um, and then also I am like a philodendron nut. I love philodendrons and I love um, pothos, any kind of vining plant. And as you know, in Canada, it's really difficult to find these plants, especially the really rare, unique ones. And where I am in Saskatoon, like it's even more difficult to find anything. So what I, I would search the internet and look for things that I'd always be on like eBay. This was before plant shops. Like this was before plants were cool. This was like 10 years ago type thing. Like this is a really long time ago when I started getting into this stuff. So this was before plant shops existed and like your options were literally eBay. Like that was what you did. Like I don't even know if Amazon was really a thing then. So I would go on eBay and I'd look at eBay.com and I'd be like, oh, so jealous of all the seeds and plants and stuff that were being sold in San Diego in particular was really big at the time on, you know, house plants and things. So I would look on eBay and I'd just be like drooling. And then I'd go on eBay.com CA, which is the Canadian version, and like you're completely limited. There's not a lot in regards to the plants that I was looking for or the ones that I liked. Um, and eBay.com at the time was really good for having reputable companies selling these products, and they would have disclaimers that say US only on them. Um, and even if you message these guys and you said like, hey, would you be willing to send to Canada? They would actually email back and they'd say, hey, like legally we can't do that. Just an FYI. There's a lot of rules and stipulations around that. There are some growers that can get dual, like they can get the pass basically to do dual shipping for both Canada and the US. Um, but it is quite the process to get that designation. So. Yeah, they, they were really straight up. They were really forward with me. And then that's kind of when I started learning about this whole fact that you can't be trading plants back and forth between countries, et cetera, and so forth. Not even seeds, nothing. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, another fun fact actually is in agriculture. So if you were a soil scientist and you're working with soil and things, if you go to another country to work um, on soils or plants or crops and you declare that as what you were doing was for business and your business was agriculture especially poultry and things um they will screen you there's a lot of rules you have to follow if you're switching countries to be able to do agricultural work because they don't want you bringing things like soil samples back or potential bird sicknesses etc and so forth so even the personnel that work in that industry when you move from country to country if you disclose that you're working in these areas of industry when you come back or forth back and forth over the border um there's a lot of screening and there's a lot of rules and there's a lot of paperwork you have to go through so even just the human without the seeds without the plant that human being is considered to be a liability to the environment around it so that's just a fun fact i don't know if this is going to interest you guys or not but i'm going to let you go now this is probably a long video i'll talk to you guys later bye